coming in at a massive 66 inches tall. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Tea Time is now. This is the review of the Arcade 1UP Golden Tea 3D Golf Arcade Cabinet. Special shout out to my buddy Vern and his family. They received their unit uh, before I did. My unit's not even going to be here for a couple of weeks. And they let me come over to their house, do an unboxing. Link is in the video description below. And also so I could film my review. For starters, this is absolutely a beautiful cabinet by Arcade 1UP. I'm very, very impressed with the overall size, quality of the graphics, as well as many other things we'll point out in the review. And of course, there are opportunities for improvement along the way. Love the wood finish on here. I actually think those graphics with the little wood, with the little divots in the wood, I actually think that looks a lot better than the Pac-Man Anniversary Edition cabinets with that wood grain, as you can kind of see in the background. I kind of like this lighter version better. As you can see, gone are the risers, man. You build a base of the cabinet, and then you connect the base to the top of the cabinet. It's a very simple assembly overall. Just like the Arcade 1UP Terminator 2 arcade cabinet, the marquee on here is one of the newer style marquees that Arcade 1UP is going for, having just a translucent piece of acrylic artwork that you slide into some slots with a light strip mounted on a board behind it. The artwork on here looks really good. And whether you are in a brightly lit room, like this camera shot here, where the marquee, this marquee is actually turned on right here. Marquee does not wash out, looks really good in a well-lit room. And if you're in your dark arcade room with just your arcade machines turned on and all your little lights all over your arcade room, it's going to look fantastic like this. It's It pops, uh, doesn't wash out. I mean, literally, you have to be like 20 feet away from this thing to not tell what it is or, or what it says. This is a really well done lit marquee. I'm impressed. Everything about this arcade cabinet has a big boy feel to it from the sheer just ginormous size of it compared to a standard arcade one up like the one on the right hand side there standard arcade one up on a riser this thing just dwarfs it in every category the control deck is a couple of inches wider the cabinet is many many inches taller as well as we don't have that weird looking riser that you try to blend in with the artwork everything is a single panel or two panels screwed together but it looks like a single panel and unlike the arcade one up big blue cabinet i love seeing that arcade one up included some really nice speaker grills to cover the speakers. The speakers themselves are the same speakers you would find in other cabinets. And although the speakers appear to be the exact same hardware as speakers you would find in those three quarter scale arcade cabinets, the speakers on this particular cabinet sound a lot better than those. So definitely some kind of weird software issue possibly going on with those other arcade one up cabinets to have speaker gate. But this thing sounds pretty decent. Let's crank up the volume and show you how good. molded coin door that comes included with the cabinet that you screw into the kick plate during assembly is a plastic molded coin door, but it's done really, really well. This is the first time I've seen one of these arcade one up molded coin doors. And I got to say, I'm very impressed with the one that they have on top of the golden tee here, the light up buttons, the hinges, the little metal lock, everything. It almost looks real. It's pretty good. During the assembly process, since you assemble the top half of the cabinet separately, and the bottom half of the cabinet separately and eventually screw them together, you're going to have two rear panels on the back of the cabinet. And when it comes to modding opportunities, you have tons and tons and tons of room in here to throw in subwoofers, PCs, other devices, whatever you need. If you wanted to mod this cabinet, as you can see here, room galore. Taking a look at the PCB board mounted on the rear of the monitor, you do have a port for the marquee and next to it you do have a vacant USB port. So if you wanted to power some LED strips on the back of the cabinet or maybe even power some lights that go to the coin door buttons and things like that, you can get that done. You have your speakers, micro SD port, a memory card port, as well as a micro USB port and the power port. Now for the last couple of years, we've gotten used to Arcade 1UP using BOE branded 17 inch monitors for their arcade cabinets. This particular cabinet comes with a 19 inch monitor and Arcade 1UP has changed the brand. The brand on here is Lightstar and there's the bottle number for those of you curious to research specs. 
Overall, after you assemble the cabinet, you literally only have to plug in about four cables. It couldn't be simpler. So the wiring on the inside of the cabinet is very simple. As you can see, once again, tons of storage space, as well as those are those brackets that hold everything together. Taking a look at the control panel, it looks very similar to the three-quarter scale Arcade 1UP Golden T uh, control panel, except for a few differences, such as we have a headphone jack. You do have the same size trackball. It's the exact same three inch, kind of a clone hap trackball that's inside of these control panels that are in both this machine as well as the three quarter scale one. It's the same trackball. You have the live button for accessing the internet and navigating the menus. And of course your volume sliders on off switch, etc. The trackball out of the box is nice smooth, got a nice smooth roll and sound to it. Definitely better than the one that's a little bit more grindy on the three quarter scale. My assumption is that the metal pins and rollers that this trackball spins on might be improved versus the original three inch trackball that's on the other cabinets. However, I didn't want to crack open Vern's trackball because this is not my cabinet. I'll definitely crack open mine when I receive my cabinet in a couple of weeks and do a comparison follow up video. Overall, love the size of the control panel in the unit. I'm five foot 11. No worries about me hitting my hand against the screen on this control panel. One small opportunity for improvement or for the modders out there would be to add maybe some artwork to the front of this control panel. I understand that the kick plate was predominantly black in color with just a coin door on it, but having that control panel also black, it just makes this entire cabinet look like just one big black cabinet, kind of boring from the front. Obviously the artwork on the sides look fantastic, but the front of this cabinet I think needs a little bit more color besides just the marquee in the control panel. I probably would like to put some artwork there. All right, let's check out the user interface options and games included. So this does come with eight games. They're spread out amongst two pages on the user interface. You get your Golden Tee 3D 95, you got your Golden Tee 97, 98, 99, you got your Golden Tee 2K, Golden Tee Classic. You have your Shuffle Shot, as well as your World Class Bowling. And Shuffle Shot also has four different kinds of games you can play as well inside of it and obviously all of these games have multiple courses lots of replay value i have to say these are the best online leaderboards and options i've seen from arcade one up so far myself personally for every single game you go to every single game they have different leaderboard options for every single course such as what is the longest drive who had the most birdies on a particular course who had the most eagles on a particular course who hit the most greens on a particular course? How many fairways were hit on a particular course? What your total score was on a particular course? All of these different leaderboard options, longest putt, etc. for every single course on every single game. Lots of opportunity to get your name on the leaderboards. I absolutely love this. This is fantastic. The leaderboards for the golf games are fantastic. When you take a look at the leaderboards for the Shuffle Shot game, for instance, as you can see here, the Shuffle Shot has several different game modes that you can choose from, which we'll show you here shortly. But again, many different leaderboard options, ways to get yourself on the leaderboard. And when it comes to the bowling, who's got the best bowling scores? Who are the highest kingpins uh, uh, on flash mode, on regular mode? Has anyone hit a 300? Who's in the 300 club? Who's in the 710 split club, etc. Fantastic leaderboard options on this cabinet. And of course, you're just using the trackball to move the mouse uh, when navigating all these user interfaces. And if you go to the cog wheel next to each game, you uh, have the ability to change some dip switch settings. You can change the skill level, whether or not you have a track mode on for all of the games. And of course, you can choose scan lines for every single game. What I can tell you about the scan lines is if you saw my video where I was complaining about the arcade one up big blue scan lines being too dark, the scan lines on this arcade cabinet look really, really good. They're definitely not too dark and they're not too bright. It's like that's what they should be. So for instance, with the scan lines turned off, this is what it looks like. And here's a zoomed in view with the scan lines turned on. The scan lines are not too dark. The scan lines look great in my opinion. I absolutely love these. It's it's just the proper mix. And it actually makes the games all look better on the cabinet as well. My opinion, 
would recommend playing with scan lines turned on all games at all times. I think it looks great. And of course, the last thing to show really quickly on the user interface is underneath your internet settings, you can obviously set up your Wi-Fi network, create your own avatar for reporting and uh, posting your scores online, as well as you could add friends to your favorite list. That way you could see your friend scores, etc. Just some really basic stuff. All right, so let's talk about this monitor. So we got a 19 inch monitor, which is an improvement versus the 17 inch monitor that Arcade 1UP uses in the past. However, this brand monitor that they went with versus uh, the traditional BOEs that we saw in the cabinets with 17 inch monitors, this monitor is not as good in regards to uh, viewing angles from the sides of the cabinet and from across the room. Obviously, when you're super far away from the cabinet, this TN monitor is going to wash out. So like, for instance, if you know, you got a whole bunch of machines in your room and the ones that have the BOE monitor running the attract mode, they're still going to be bright and colorful. But this cabinet is going to be sitting in the corner like this with kind of a gray screen on it, etc. But that's obviously only when you're not using the cabinet. When two people are standing side by side up, up front right next to the cabinet, the monitor is going to look just fine for both people hanging out, drinking some beers, and playing these games and having a good time. Whether they're standing up or sitting in a stool in front of it. All right, let's talk about the games and the gameplay and the emulation. Obviously, Arcade 1UP knows how to emulate the Golden Tee Golf games. They really had minimal to zero complaints on the three-quarter scale cabinet on the performance of those games. These are all the very old, old, old school Golden Tee games. These aren't the most difficult games in the world to emulate. A lot of people can get these up and running on a ton of um, multi-k devices and things like that the arcade one up pcb can easily handle all of the golden tee golf games all the different courses and stuff that are included on here because they're all the old ones all the ones from 1995 to 2000 they all look play perform and uh sound pretty good as well because i like the speakers on this cabinet i understand it's a golden tee cabinet and we have six golden tee games on here but i wish they would have maybe gone with four or five golden tees and kind of mix things up just a little bit more. But then again, guess what? Uh, they did give us world-class bowling and the shuffle shot games, and uh, these games are super fun to play on this cabinet. Let's check it out. One opportunity for improvement in my opinion is we do have an eight game cabinet, but six of the games are golf games, one bowling game and shuffle shot. I understand this is a golden tee and cabinet. It's a golfing themed cabinet, but it would have been nice in my opinion to maybe have five golf games you could have got rid of one of the golden tees and given us just another variety game such as you know you know cornhole or something they could have thrown something else on here taking advantage of that trackball to go with the bowling and the shuffle shot Now the Shuffle Alley uh, game on here is very interesting. So for instance, you can select playing up to one to four players, but whenever you pick uh, playing by yourself, you're not player one. The computer's always player one. You always end up being player two, which I find kind of interesting. Again, I never played this game before until I uh, played it on this cabinet. There's a little bit of stuttering in the emulation from what I'm seeing. I, I mean, it might just be me. You guys let me know. Just some slight stuttering. From the research I've done, this particular game is notoriously kind of hard to emulate. Um, for the most part, uh, you don't really notice it, you know, when you're actually playing on the cabinet. Um, but then again, you know, if someone's an expert on this game, definitely let me know your thoughts below. Um, super, you know, it's super fun, super challenging. And, you know, everything works really well. It's just the occasional stutter on this game. I really don't see that stutter with the bowling game. Oh, hey. Picture perfect. Oh, hey, that's a keeper. 
30. Overall, guys, this is a $700 cabinet if you get it at MSRP prior to it going on any kind of sales or things of that nature. I got mine on pre-order. Mine will be coming in a couple of weeks. I greatly appreciate my buddy Vern letting me use his for the purpose of this review and checking it out the last couple of days. This is an expensive cabinet, and uh, I think the biggest opportunity for improvement is the monitor. I think a lot of people are going to have issues with the monitor. I myself can live with it because, you know what, it doesn't wash out when I'm standing in front of it playing it, and I guess that's the most important thing than somebody looking over my shoulder. Minus that, when it comes to the sound, the sound definitely sounds better than other Arcade 1UP cabinets recently that have had those speaker gate issues. The sound, uh, the control panel, the size of the cabinet, build quality of the cabinet, coin door mold, speakers, light up marquee, everything else goes in the positive column in my book. So I'm pretty much uh, digging this uh, particular purchase. I'm going to do some additional testing and some follow-up videos on the emulation on World Class Bowling as well as Shuffle uh, Alley as well. Trying to get those games up and running on my main PC here at home. That way we can do some additional side-by-side -side comparisons. But then again, even if we find something kind of funky, I have a feeling a lot of casual owners won't even notice and they won't even care because the games themselves, they're running pretty well on this cabinet. Let me know what you guys think. I'm liking this one. Give me your feedback thoughts below. If you enjoyed the review, give me a thumbs up on the way out. And as always, my dudes, thank you for subscribing.